When I say submit to the Holy Spirit, I want to tell you that if you will live a life that is submitted to him, that he will give you opportunity to do the work of the church outside of the church. A couple weeks ago, we had, and I think I had some of you guys praying for Blakeland. She had been sick. She uh, got really sick, had fever, and uh, she had a, a terrible rash all over her body. And we, it, it was days, and we, we couldn't seem, no matter what we did, we, you know, all the things that you try to do at first, and she wasn't getting better. And so took her to the hospital, and she had what's called Kawasaki disease. And it's not a major thing, but it's something that needed to be treated. And so she was admitted to the hospital for three days in the middle of the week. And so obviously Kayla was staying with her. I was at home with the boys. We're driving back and forth between Rome. And, and the whole time being like, man, what in the world is, 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 why are we going through this? Why is this happening? And, and I remember like for a while they couldn't figure out how to treat it. I mean, like it's not something that they dealt with a lot. And so they were trying different stuff and she just kept getting worse and kept getting worse. And, Finally, I prayed one night. I said, Lord, I, I need you to heal my baby girl. Like, I I mean, that's, you can't take that one. Like, I can't handle that. I can't, I'm, it, I'm, she's got me wrapped around her finger. So I'm going to need you to do something, Lord, because this is a problem. And I even said, why, why, why is she facing this? Like, is there something you're trying to show us? Like, couldn't figure it out. So finally, she, she gets treated well enough, comes home. She came home on Friday. Well, Kayla and I were supposed to go to Houston for a conference the next week. And we were going to meet my parents on Saturday to drop our kids off. And uh, because Blakeland didn't get home until, I think it was Friday night she got home, we decided we're, we're going to wait a day, see how she's doing. And Saturday she was fine, and so we said, we'll meet you on Sunday. We would never do that. We were flying out Sunday. So we wouldn't typically meet them on Sunday, but it was the only way to make it work. So we'll meet them on Sunday. I come in the Sunday morning. I preach twice. And I was in this. There's a, a back room back here behind our kids' ministry. It's just a little bitty room. And I was sitting in there before service because it was kind of away from everything so I could kind of get my thoughts clear. And, and I took my wallet out of my pocket. By the way, you'll see I have my wallet in my pocket. I always have my wallet in my pocket. Always. Very rarely do I take it out of my pocket in public because I know me. And so I, I took it out in that room and I set it on a little table in that back room. I never do that. Never do that. But I did that day. I put it back there and I came in here and I preached. And we went home and getting everything together, loading the kids up. And, and uh, we start to go get in the truck to drive and meet my parents. We're going to meet them around Nashville. It's about halfway. And... When we start to walk out to the truck, I do the, you know, you, guys, you know how we do. We do the pocket check to make sure. Do I got everything I need? I got my wallet, my keys. My, I realize I don't have my, my wallet. Well, I'm going to fly. You can't fly without your wallet. You can't fly without your license. And so I told Kayla, all right, well, we don't have time to go back to the church. We live in Adairsville. It's 25 minutes. So I'm like, we don't have time to go back to the church then to Nashville, then to the airport. We, don't, we can't do all that. And so you go on, meet my parents, and I'll take the car, and I'll go back to the church, get my wallet. We'll meet at the airport. Plan is perfect. So she takes off about 30 minutes. I was at the house for probably 30, 40 minutes. I go to get in the car, and I feel my pocket. And you know, right now I have my keys because I always have my keys in my pocket. My keys were sitting in the front seat of the truck that she had just driven 45 miles north with. So I had no keys to my car. I'm in Adairsville. And so I'm like, oh, my goodness. Like, so I start calling around. I called, I called Caleb, who's back here. He's ducking his head right now. I called him first. He didn't answer. So, you know, just for what it's worth. I called, I called Cody, who is, I don't know if he's in here, and asked him if he could come get me, bring me to the church to get my keys. He said, uh, I would, but my truck is taken apart. I don't know if that's true or not. That's what he said. So I'm just going to take his word for it. My truck's taken apart. I can't do it. And so I get on. We have cameras in here, by the way. So I get on the camera, and I remember they're doing a kids' worship night. So Heath and Meredith were here. And so I called Heath. Heath was playing the bass, so he didn't answer. But he finally called me back, and I said, hey, I am so sorry. By the way, I don't like to ask people for stuff. But, so, like, this is super awkward for me. But I'm like, can you go to the back, get my wallet, and drive it to Adairsville like, I'm at, like I have to have. So he does. This box is checked. Praise God it worked out. 
<coughs> so I'm like, I don't, I still don't have keys, but I got my wallet at least. So praise God for that. But somehow I got to get to Chattanooga to the airport. So I'm like, I'll get an Uber. You ever tried to get an Uber in Adairsville, Georgia? Anybody ever, everybody ever tried it? Just curious. Especially on a Sunday afternoon. So I, I book an Uber. This dude from Cartersville accepts it. And then he texts me and he was like, they're wanting to pay me like $15 to take you from Adairsville to Chattanooga. It ain't worth it. Sorry. And I was like, okay. Um, so I try Lyft. Can't get it. Uber. Can't get it. I tried for an hour. Can't get anything. And finally, I'm like, all right, I guess we're just not supposed to go to this conference. So for some reason in my mind, the word taxi pops in my head. And I'm like, well, is there a taxi service in Adairsville, Georgia? I don't even know that people do taxis anymore. Like, so I Google taxi Adairsville, Georgia. And it brings up a taxi service in Calhoun. And I call the guy and I say, hey, is there any chance you could get me to the airport? And he's like, yeah, I got a guy I'll send him. So taxi comes. Now, you've, you've kept track of this story, right? You know all the different variables. I get in this taxi car, and I promise you the dude that's driving looks like he's 12 years old. Like he's like, he's so young, so young. And he backs into the driveway. I get in the car. I shut the door. And like most people, they put it in drive and they like kind of, you know, we got like one of them little dips that are driving, so they kind of coast out. This dude like, woof, like I'm in a little subdivision and I promise you he got up to 45 in my little subdivision. Cuts out there. I mean, like we're breaking, like, you know, and, and he gets me back on the interstate and I texted Kayla and I was like, I might die. I'm not sure, but like, and literally what I told her, I told her this, I said, Either God is about to bless us outside of our minds at this conference or we're going to die on the way because it's either the devil or the Lord that is trying to get us to not go on this trip, but whatever it is. So I'm in the truck. I'm in the car driving with this dude, and I am an introvert by nature. Like, I, I know I'm on a stage all the time, and I talk to you all here, but, like, if given the choice between talking to people or not talking to people, I'm usually going to choose not talking to people. Like, I'm, especially if I'm by myself, I just like it chill, like, and so I'm not making conversation. And all of a sudden, this 10-year-old in the front asked me, he says, he says, do you have a wife and kids? And I said, yeah. And I started telling him, you know, what, all that. And I said, what's, he says, he's 19. I said, how old are you? He said, 19. I said, what's your plan? He's like, I want to be rich. I'm like, all right, well, I, what's your plan for that? Like, I mean, I'm, at this point now, we're, we're friends. So we're just talking now. And this is, I'm going to die with this guy. So I'm like, let's just... So he starts telling me, uh, you know, I'm, I've already, I already own a house. And I mean, this, it's impressive. This kid's impressive. And uh, we're talking. He said, what do you do? And I'm like, all right, this is where the conversation always takes a turn. Every time. Every time you ask me what I do. I mean, this kid, we, oh, by the way, when I got in the car, it was gangster rap, F this. Like all, it was just all over the place. And so. He says, what do you do? And I said, well, I pastor a church in Cartersville. And he's like, oh, man, I'm super religious. Like, I mean, I, I'm big, big religious. And, um, I said, oh, yeah. I said, where do you go to church at? He told me, he said, I, I'm, he said I'm Jehovah's Witness, but I want to be Muslim. And I'm like, all right. Now we're, now we're going to go. So let's, this conversation just got interesting. I was like, tell me about that. Like, what's your, what's kind of the reasoning there? He said, I just, you know, like I, I go to church and he said, it just seems like Christians, they're just, they're just kind of playing a game with it. He's like, but then I see all these Muslims and they're like, I mean, they're committed. Like they know everything that their book says. And he's like, I just, I respect them. And I said, I get that. I, I mean, because like, I do, I get that. I'm as, nobody's more frustrated with Christians than pastors. I'm going to just tell you that right now. Like, I get that. And I said, but what about, what if there was only one way to heaven? Like, what if what the Bible says is true? 
we had a conversation. We started talking about different stuff, and I started talking about how, you know, Islam and Christianity, it's, they're both from the same root. They just, they got it wrong. It's, it's different interpretations of what happened after Abraham. It's, it's that Ishmael was the one that was blessed and not Isaac. And so that's, there's literally this branch. And so every war that you see in the Middle East for all time, it all ties back to this is the root of every conflict. And so I started talking with him and, and ultimately it, it came to a, a conversation about the end times. And I said, you know what I believe? I said, I believe that, because he said he believed in the Antichrist and he said he, all this stuff. And I said, I believe that Islam and Judaism are gonna be some of the largest proponents of the Antichrist because they're still looking for a Messiah. And I don't know, that, it wasn't like this profound statement, but when I said that, something shifted in this kid. And he was like, oh my goodness. He's like, that makes so much sense. We kept talking. We got off the exit to go to the, the interstate. And I mean, like, I, I'm still being, I'm still an idiot. Like, I'm not, I'm not picking up on what's happening yet. I'm still just having a conversation. Like, we're just talking about theories of theology. And when we got off the exit, man, the Holy Spirit hit me. And he said, this is why. Your daughter was in the hospital for three days. This is why you took your wallet out of your pants. This is why you left your keys in the truck. This is, he said, this is why. And I said, man, can I tell you a crazy story? I said, let me tell you about my week. I told him everything that happened. And I said, and God just told me to tell you that all of it was so that you would know that Jesus loves you, that he is the only way to heaven, and that he wants a relationship with you. And his voice started to break. And I said, would you mind if before I got out of here, could I pray with you? And he said, I would love that. And before I walked into the airport to get on the plane, I got to pray with a 19-year-old taxi driver from Calhoun, Georgia. That's not because I am such an effective soul winner. I just told you, I talked to the kid for 45 minutes before I realized, oh, I'm supposed to tell him about Jesus. If you will be submissive to the Holy Spirit, he will use you in ways that you didn't imagine possible and in scenarios that you would have never planned for yourself. Because that is how God works. But it is time that we get busy about the kingdom of God. There is a lost and dying world that if we don't reach them with the gospel, they will go to hell. There is a lost and dying world that is falling to a deception of the spirit of the age. And you and I are the ones that have been tasked with carrying the truth of God's word. But it's time that we get busy.